always with the controversial topics. Hi, my name is Sydney, welcome back to hell. And as per usual, before we launch in, today's video is sponsored by Kamikoto Knives. And by me. For I would love it if you little eggies could go and subscribe to the email list on my website because it helps me tremendously. I have a new weekly newsletter, I let you know when videos drop, and I tell you when I'm releasing new merch. For example, a couple new designs are coming very soon, and they are very funny. And you might like them. Who knows? But you won't know unless you subscribe to my email list. So do that if you so desire. Uh, no pressure or anything, but you know, it does help me a lot in case YouTube deletes me from the platform. Now, I realize that half of you have probably clicked on this video ready to fight me, and the other half probably think I'm some sort of leftist that hates cops. Haha, <laughs> I got you. I'm not. But I will say, if whatever I have titled this video made you raise an eyebrow, please hear me out. I promise I have a point. I think it's fair to say that the right wing, in one way or another, has historically supported police. It has given us slogans and movements like Thin Blue Line and Back the Blue. I personally have many of these Back the Blue patch sticker things that my dog decided to eat. What are you trying to say? But in the last little while, and more specifically in the last two years or so, there's certainly been a shift away from pro-police sentiments. More and more, we are seeing people question their support of law enforcement, and I don't think this transition has been a gleeful one. Unlike the cops, usual sworn enemies like Antifa and the like, who seem to revel in the fact that they hate law enforcement and police officers, this transition for conservatives has not been a fun or even pleasant one. Or maybe it has, who's to say? I just know that many people are pretty angry and there's been a lot of swearing. That being said, some folks on the right wing are clinging to their support of police like a lifeline in the middle of the sea. Turning a blind eye to some legitimate and fair criticisms of the force that have played out around the world. And if nothing else, the last few years, and again, the last couple months specifically, have crystallized, at least for me, that come and take it can't really coexist with Thin Blue Line. Because in the end, who do you think is showing up to take it? Not your local ice cream man. Let me tell you now. You don't even have a local ice cream man. Emotionally, you're where dreams go to die. And because I'm a glutton for my own punishment, I wanna discuss this. The police force in all of its glory. Because like many right-wingers and many like-minded people, I find myself sad and confused by the actions of police officers, especially when so many of us have spent so much time defending them in the wake of this very aggressive anti-police sentiment. The anti-police sentiment from the left, just to be clear. But before you once again board my hell gondola and traverse down into the depths of sadness, Let's hear from our sponsor, Kamikoto Knives. I only have one rule in life. No, you don't. No track pants outside of the house. And always keep your knives sharp. Enter Kamikoto. Kamikoto makes beautiful handcrafted Japanese steel kitchen knives. The steel is sourced from mills in Japan and each knife goes through an intense 19 step process that takes several years from start to finish. It makes them strong, durable, and their single bevel edge makes them sharp and very high quality. Perfect for doing a stab in, into some meat. Each knife comes in a beautiful heavy duty wood box, which is great for storage, keeping your fingers away from the spicy pointer or giving as a gift because it's pretty. I recently got a new chef's knife and I love that it's weighted, it feels nice to hold and obviously it's very sharp and makes cooking a lot easier. Which is probably why these knives are also used by Michelin star chefs. But Kami Kodo has a ton of other options, utility knives, vegetable knives, you can even get a sharpening whetstone, which honestly reminds me of God of War. You didn't happen to find the whetstone, perchance. Kami Koto is having a massive sale, and you can get an additional $50 off any purchase when you use code Sydney Watson. So click the link in the description or go to kamikoto.com slash Sydney Watson for an additional $50 off when you use code Sydney Watson. On a balmy August day in 1966, an honor student called Charles Joseph Whitman perched himself on the observation deck of a clock tower at the University of Texas and opened fire on civilians below. Whitman killed over a dozen people and wounded 31 more before he was eventually killed by police officers. 
This event sparked the birth of SWAT. Police chiefs across the country realized they needed to have plans in place and teams of officers equipped and trained to handle situations just like this one. These came to be known as special weapons and tactic teams. 48 years later, in a drug raid gone wrong, one such SWAT team accidentally threw a flashbang grenade into the crib of a two-year-old boy, covering him in burns and blasting a hole in his chest. The officers found no drugs. They didn't find the person they were looking for. He didn't even live in that house. And the truth is, there are plenty of stories like this one. And as with everything, for one story telling us about a baby with a hole in his chest, we can find another where an officer sacrificed himself for a complete stranger, held a man tight so he couldn't throw himself from a bridge, or drove himself mad pouring over photos of brutal abuse trying to save a traffic child. The good and bad of police, as far as both sides of the coin go, has never been terribly straightforward. Perhaps this is why criticism and support of the police force has been so extreme and so tense. The extreme differences in a catastrophic mess up and a heroic display of bravery are stark. I guess you could say that it isn't a blue and white issue. Please go away from here. For the longest time, conservatives particularly have supported law enforcement because they also have a strong emphasis placed on law and order. A National Review article says it best. There have been many good reasons for supporting police forces, including long memories of the post-countercultural crime wave that devastated, and in some cases destroyed, many American cities, conservatives' penchant for law and order, and Americans' widely shared disdain for the cops' usual opponents. This article describes those opponents as hippies, but today they could be groups like Black Lives Matter and Antifa. Who I admit are not hippies. They're something far, far worse. We are the grand people. Although tough on crime appeals have never been limited to conservative politicians or voters, conservatives instinctively, and it turned out correctly, understood that the way to reduce crime is to have more cops making more arrests, not more sociologists identifying more root causes. Conservatives are rightly proud to have supported police officers doing their jobs at times when progressives were on the other side. As far as progressive policies go, when we were presented with the defund the police initiative, it made many on the right wing stop and say, hmm, that's dumb. Then we said, I told you so, when crime rates soared in cities like New York and Minneapolis in the wake of these initiatives. This outcome was hardly a revelation, but for many, it crystallized the notion that there is undoubtedly a need for police forces and policing itself might be a necessary evil. But I think the last few years for a lot of people have made us stop and think how deep our allegiance to the police force should actually go. And this of course is not because all police are bad or all police stand in the way of liberty and freedom. It's that if the last few years is anything to go by, police don't really answer to the population. They answer to their higher ups and their higher ups appear to answer to politicians. Some have even argued that the police force is merely an arm of whichever government they serve. How much or how little we like them is entirely dependent upon who's in charge. And I don't know, maybe there's something to be said for that. For many of us, the last two years have shown how tyrannical, unreasonable and overreaching government and its laws, rules and regulations can be. Many of us who viewed ourselves as decent law-abiding citizens suddenly found ourselves at odds with mandates and regulations that were either unconstitutional or directly impacted our mobility and rights as citizens. Even I fell into the trap of complacency thinking, I don't break the law, so what would police even want with me? And this way of thinking is all well and good until the goalposts change. What shocked a good portion of us further still were the actions of police who were instructed to enforce these laws, rules, and regulations. It even seems some took great delight in harassing and terrorizing otherwise law-abiding citizens for sometimes the most trivial of infractions. I'm looking at you, Victoria Belize you giant bag of smashed buttholes. For the last two years in Australia, we have seen videos of police beating people for not wearing masks, firing rubber bullets at the backs of fleeing unarmed protesters, using unnecessary force or pepper spray on elderly men and women. And I was still fighting, and it's look at one eye, I'm, I, I never quit and I never yeah. live by fear. Hold the line, hold the line. Yeah. Hold the line is a message from a man that's just been pepper sprayed and released from the paramedics behind us, 80-year-old man, man Aviamini for Rebel News. Have blood on your hands! You populate the planet! You've got blood on your hands! 
In Canada, in only the last little while, we saw cops exchanging gleeful messages about going after demonstrators in Ottawa. We watched videos of excessive force on peaceful, unarmed protesters. We heard the Ottawa police saying that they will use all resources available to target protesters and anyone associated with protesters. Thank you. It's a great question. And the simple answer is yes. If you are involved in this protest, we will actively look to identify you and follow up with financial sanctions and criminal charges. Absolutely. We have increased ability to identify and target protesters and supporters of protesters who are funding and enabling unlawful and harmful activity by the protesters themselves. Investigative evidence gathering teams are collecting financial, digital, vehicle registration, driver identification, insurance status, and other related evidence that will be used in prosecutions. People in these two countries and many other countries around the world have been bashed, kicked in the head, thrown to the ground. In New Zealand, they ripped people out of crowds by their hair. Real talk though, what is happening here? Police in many Western countries come to protests, decked out in riot gear with military weapons, anticipating battle with an enemy. But the question is, how has the otherwise law-abiding citizen, standing for freedom, and the end to unnecessary restrictions come to be seen as this enemy? This policing overreach has extended to matters as simple as not showing your vax pass at the shops, not wearing a mask, peacefully assembling just to be heard by the very politicians who are supposedly in power to represent us. The small fringe minority will defend democracy. We are taking these actions today to stand against authoritarianism. Against authoritarianism. The simple answer is yes. If you are involved in this protest, we will actively look to identify you and follow up with financial sanctions and criminal charges. The way to get your account unfrozen is to stop being part of the blockade. Against authoritarianism. I just want to get a coffee, okay? Why is the camera coffee? in my face right now? What's Are you here partaking? You walked right up now to you're me. in the red zone? I'm scared. I want to go for a coffee down there. Okay. What, can I, can you, I go for a coffee? Still being arrested Pardon? right Do you now. live in this? No, you're I not excluded here, from that. I, I'm Where do you go live? Alberta. It's time for you to leave. I can't even go down there for no, a coffee. No, go grab you're yourself in the red zone right now. If you don't leave right now, you will be arrested. Do you understand me? I can't That's go for a coffee. Grab yourself, because if we see you, we'll be patrolling all day. If we see you again, it'll be different. Leave. What did I tell you? Take your camera away. and get out of here. Do you understand that? I'm walking away. Walk away. Walk away. Walk away. I, I, your phone doesn't uh, need to be in our face when you're walking away. Go. The actions of these police, while some might argue are not representative of all police as a whole, absolutely broke the heart of so many citizens. Just following orders, as the phrase goes, is not an acceptable explanation for the force and brutality exercised against peaceful, unarmed people. Side note, and speaking of just following orders, research conducted in 1963 called the Behavioral Study of Obedience found that people actually feel disconnected from their actions when they comply with orders, even though they're the ones committing the act. They often view their actions as passive rather than voluntary. In 1962, Holocaust organizer Adolf Eichmann said that he and other low-level officers were forced to serve as mere instruments at the instruction of their higher-ups. But Germans and psychology aside, it doesn't change culpability. And I will take the opportunity to add that I know there are police who have quit the force over the mandates and other things that are in place. I also know that there are police who feel very similarly to the way that everyday citizens are feeling towards the police force as a general rule. The very freedom that they moved to Canada for has been taken away. And people, Canadians who lived here, who were born here, they were not recognizing that. I fought here. I fought to come here to have it. And it was very difficult to see it to be taken away. Thank you truckers, thank you farmers, thank you people with open hearts and um, clear minds for standing up. The police officers, when we could not stand up for you, I know it's clear in my mind what decision I will make uh, when I am asked to follow an unlawful order. I'm for freedom, 
of choice, for freedom of conscience, for freedom of speech, for freedom of expression, for freedom of communication. And I am to serve, protect, and to help out you people in Canada. Something was taken away from me that I can never get back. Watching members of the Ottawa Police Service seize fuel from peaceful protesters took away a long-held belief that I thought to be a lasting truth. And that is that the police are here when push really comes to shove to protect and help people. I will never see my profession in the same light than I did before today. What I saw was the police doing politicians dirty work like hired goons. This goes against every reason why I chose this mostly thankless, difficult, traumatizing career with terrible hours. And of course, the argument from the other side of the aisle is that these police are actually acting in our best interests. They are carrying out health orders and mandates that are designed to keep us safe. By kneeing me in the face? Sid knee. Health knee. We have made it very clear throughout the previous weeks the police are not opposed to free speech. We are opposed to activity that breaches the public health order and puts the vast majority of the community in danger. Today's actions only further serve to jeopardise the freedoms of those people who are doing the right thing. But despite all of this, we arrive at a point where many, many people on the right wing are falling out of love with the police. An article by the American Conservative considers the issue like this. The question plaguing conservatives is whether the whole policing system is broken, or whether there are a few bad apples among police departments who are exploiting a basically functional system. If there are just a few corrupting individuals within a relatively sound system, conservatives want to deal with those individuals and not burn down the whole system. This has been covered extensively when it comes to race-related policing here in the United States. But as far as pandemic policing goes, we are definitely dealing with a different set of rules and expectations. Police are not designed to be the attack dogs of politicians. And besides, in some ways, maybe in many ways, being an arm of whichever government is in charge at the time, there's also something to be said for the militarization of the police force. In his 2013 book, Rise of the Warrior Cup, Radley Balco writes, Law enforcement agencies across the US, at every level of government, have been blurring the line between police officer and soldier. The war on drugs and, more recently, post 9-11 anti-terrorism efforts have created a new figure on the US scene, the Warrior Cup armed to the teeth, ready to deal harshly with targeted wrongdoers, and a growing threat to familiar American liberties. It should be noted that in 1996, the National Defense Authorization Act allowed the Defense Secretary to give local law enforcement excess military equipment at no cost. In the two decades since, the total value of military goods transferred to police has gone from 9.4 million to almost 800 million. The argument here is that police act as if they're participating in a war effort when dealing with harmless and often innocent civilians who are typically accused of non-violent civil or administrative violations. One conservative writer I found noted, were the military being used in such a manner, we would rightly be outraged. Why not here? Over the past two decades, the federal government has happily sent weapons of war to local law enforcement with nary a squeak from anyone involved with either political party. Are we comfortable with this? In my travels of the internet, I found some people claiming, even the FBI, that the militarization of the police force is in response to growing crime rates. Which until recently, I'm pretty sure isn't true. The FBI tell a lie? No way. Other writing that I read suggested that conservatives will accept very undesirable behavior from police officers when they wouldn't accept it from other groups. And as the police force has been militarized, focus has shifted from one who keeps the peace to one who enforces the law, even when and if those laws are in direct opposition to liberties and freedoms. It's worth noting that policing is dependent upon Country, state, city, who's in charge, it varies dramatically depending on where you are and what kind of rights are protected by the government that's in place. And particularly over the last little while, it's fair to say that some police forces have behaved worse than others. I'm still looking at you, Victoria Police. You and Ottawa Police would make a lovely couple. And you could fight for the title of who is, in fact, the biggest bag of 
In California, we routinely see videos of people participating in smash and grabs and walking into shops and calmly stealing huge portions of merchandise. Because of a change to the law, thefts under $950 are considered a misdemeanor, meaning many of these crimes don't go reported, and if they do, police realize prosecutors probably won't even take the case. So really, what's the point in policing this at all? During the 2020 riots, police in cities like Minneapolis and St. Paul, for example, were issued a stand-down order when cities were burned. Very few arrests were made, and when they were, we watched people go free only a short time later. That have been burning in Kenosha, Wisconsin. One article I found even reminded me that journalists scolded the chief of police in Minneapolis for even referring to a riot as a riot. I hate it. In places like Australia, New Zealand, Canada, etc., it isn't hard to understand why policing has been so heavy-handed. Look at who these officers are serving. WEF-loving psychophants, or, you know, leaders who have handed down, arguably, some of the most heavy-handed and absurd responses to the sniffle times. So here we are. Either you're somebody who hates police, somebody who is clinging to the idea that we must still support police, or maybe you're even just a police officer yourself who has a lot of feelings. I just have a lot of feelings. Personally, I feel very distressed and angry watching some of the videos coming out of many countries around the world, and I am failing to understand the rationale behind some of the behavior that we've been seeing. And I personally feel very conflicted when I consider how police have been treated for the longest time by the left wing, and even in the last maybe five or 10 years, the kind of rhetoric surrounding police forces. And some criticism I think is legitimately unfair. But this doesn't change how I feel watching police forces from all over the place turn on their own citizens. You do not sell out your own for a paycheck, especially when your actions directly contribute to the subjugation of your own people. The irony is greater still that many of these officers probably don't realize that the tyranny and the overreach that they're enforcing will inevitably bite them in the butt and affect them and their loved ones. Ones. Unfortunately, they have created a situation that is of their own doing. Many people who once respected and supported the police now despise and hold them in contempt. The result is the police have become the bullies the people fear and hate, and each party acts out their respective roles. It's important to remember that our feelings and motivations are not the same as the likes of Black Lives Matter. We don't think that police, by and large, are systemically racist. We think they're acting on unconstitutional and illegal policies. And if these officers know this is the case, it is extremely confusing and painful to see them behave this way. You kneel for Black Lives Matter, you march with the LGBT, but you brutalize anyone who protests for freedom? It's absurd. It's hard to reconcile too that in one fell swoop, people like you and me go from being law-abiding citizens to not that, because we don't agree with overreaching orders. And then that puts us at odds with law enforcement. I try my best to be as fair and balanced when I cover any topic. And I admit on this occasion, this is one that I'm still working through and trying to determine my views on because, you know, I have for a really long time believed and still do believe to an extent that being a cop isn't easy and it is a brutal and fairly thankless job. And in my personal view, I just don't think it's particularly fair and accurate to tar every single police officer with the evil goon brush. I like to think I'm just being a person that thinks nice things sometimes about other people. But I will say that so many police officers have let us down and others have betrayed us entirely. And I really believe that there are so many people who have deserved so much better from police officers over the last two years. And if I'm being completely honest, I think that there are a bunch of cops out there in the world right now who should feel a ton of shame and embarrassment for their actions over the last couple years. Police should never have been stormtroopers acting out the will of politicians. And I, for one, am sad and angry that I have seen this come to pass. And in the end, I want to leave you with something that my dear darling mum said to me recently. The tyranny that has taken hold in once free nations would cease immediately if the police upheld their sworn oaths to keep the peace, 
protect the citizens, and honor human rights according to the Constitution. Now on that note, and before I open the floor to all of you, this is just a reminder that you can check out Kami Koto Knives using the link in the description. When you go there and you look, you will see that there is a massive sale going on at the moment, and you can get an additional $50 off any purchase when you use code Sydney Watson. Now open the floor to all of you. What do you all think? Are you someone who has begun to hate police? Are you holding on to the notion that this is not about them, that this is more of a reflection of politicians, that you still support the police? Do you not really know what you think about all of this and you think it's being blown out of proportion? Do you think that cops are acting in the way that they should, that they're just carrying out orders as they like to say? And what do you generally make of this topic overall? As always, if you like the video, hit subscribe and the thumbs up button. If you wanna leave a comment for free to do so, just be respectful about it. And I will see you guys next time.